Hey guys, it's Ryan. Welcome back to another oral pathology video. And this time we're going to talk about fibrooseous bone lesions. So these are benign tumors that are composed of fibrous tissue in which new bony islands develop. So a lot of these are going to contain a radiopaque component because we're talking about this osseous mineralized and fibrous tissue. So think more radiopaque as opposed to the cysts and tumors um, that we've talked about, most of them being radiolucent. So first we're going to talk about the central ossifying fibroma. And this is composed of fibroblastic stroma, or connective tissue, in which foci of mineralized products are formed. And ossifying is referring to this sort of bony tissue, and the mineralized products you can see in this image here, we have this basically radiolucent lesion, but it contains this radiopaque little specks of ossification and mineralized products that are at the center of this lesion. Now, if you watched my last video on odontogenic tumors, we talked about central odontogenic fibroma and the peripheral version, and the same theme um, is here. The same theme in that central referring is referring to the lesion occurring in bone. In this case, it's going to be a well-circumscribed radiolucency with this ossification uh, byproduct, this ossification product in the center, and peripheral, meaning that's occurring in the gum tissue. And you're not going to see this iconic radiolucent appearance. There's also a juvenile version of it, and this is an aggressive variant with rapid growth and, of course, since it's called juvenile, affecting a younger patient population. Now, similar in appearance and behavior to the cementifying fibroma, which is an odontogenic tumor, and honestly, it's probably not too important to remember that fact for the exam. Treatment, as in a lot of the lesions we've been talking about lately, is with surgical excision. Next, we have fibrous dysplasia. And the most important term to remember for this one is it having a ground glass appearance. So ground glass is, um, well, one way to remember it, at least I remember it, is I remember the word fiberglass. And fiberglass, to me, reminds me of fibrous dysplasia and this ground glass appearance. So I link fibrous and glass together. That's, again, very important to remember that and it usually stops growing after puberty. But before then, it can be very expansile and cause um, some facial distortions. And you can see how big they can get in this image here. And this ground glass appearance is like this very um, soft kind of radio, radiopaque appearance throughout the entire lesion. We have another syndrome here. This is McCune-Albright syndrome. And it has a polyostotic, which means it affects more than one bone, a fibrous dysplasia, plus uh, cutaneous cafe au lait spots, which are basically these uh, certain type of freckles, plus endocrine abnormalities like precocious puberty occur occurring a little earlier. So that's a syndrome that I would know for the exam. And treatment for fibrous dysplasia would be surgical recontouring for cosmetics. And you probably uh, practically want to wait until after puberty when this lesion stops growing so you know you won't get a significant amount of, of recurrence undoing your surgical work. Next we have another very commonly tested one, periapical cementoosseous dysplasia, or PCOD for short. This one is a reactive process of unknown origin, and it's by far most common at the apices of mandibular anterior teeth, as seen in this image here. And it's also most common in middle-aged black females. And that is also a very commonly tested fact. Uh, teeth here, even though they may look like they're the pulps are necrotic because why are there these lesions at the apex, centered around the apex? You'd think it's some sort of um, infection, but this is actually 
again, a reactive process of unknown origin, and the teeth, if you were to test them, are actually vital. So that's a really important fact to know to differentiate something that may look like uh, an, odon an endodontic or periodontal infection, and it's actually just um, PCOD that looks like it could be something a lot worse. When you have this lesion, it actually starts out looking more radiolucent, and it becomes a little bit more radiopaque with this sort of radiolucent border around it like you see in this image here. And the treatment here is actually nothing, uh, just to monitor it. Next we have the osteoblastoma, and this is a circumscribed opaque mass of bone and osteoblasts. So you can imagine if we're talking about mineralized tissue, it's going to appear radiopaque. And the treatment here is surgical excision. And that's actually it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more on oral pathology and other things dentistry. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.